we have formulated a mathematical model, optimization model, for a Blue Ridge hot tubs uh, problem. We would like to decide how many uh, units of each of the two products, Aquaspas and Hydroluxes, to produce in order to maximize uh, the profit. However, we would like to, at the same time, respect all the constraints, which are three resource constraints and non-negativities. So in this video, I would like to show you how this problem can be solved using a graphical method. Uh, the graphical method is, is not a practical method. It's just for academic purposes to gain a little bit of intuition what is happening in, inside optimization. Graphical method works only for two uh, variable uh, decision problems. And then you see we actually have uh, two variables, x1 and x2. So this is a good example to use. So what I'm going to try and do is, is try to see which points are actually feasible for uh, these constraints. Feasible means they satisfy all those constraints. So which values of x1 and x2 can I plug in here so that these inequalities are all satisfied? Right? And the second thing we would like to see is of, of those points that are feasible, which one of them gives us the highest profit? We would like to maximize the profit. So first thing to, to see is what, is, what are these points that satisfy constraint x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 100? Well, the way to approach this is that we try to see which points give us exactly 200, uh, 200 um, um, pumps used. And so that would be like x1 plus x2 equals 200. And then we try to plot this. And if you plot a line with equality, you'll find out it looks like this, right? So it's, there is a point 0, 200, there is a point maybe here 100, 100, up to uh, 200, 0, this is 0, 200, right? So one variable, so as long as the sum of the variables is 200, points uh, are on this line, right? And then of course we are interested in actually points that have less pumps used or equal to 200. Equal on the line, where will be less? The less will be below or to the left of this line. Right, so all the points in this triangle, they actually use um, 200 pumps or less. On the line, they will use exactly 200. Right, so I'm going to also put here um, a label that this is a pumps constraint, just to remember what this line represented. And if you want to actually draw uh, the other constraints, you'll find out that they are similar lines. Actually, all of them uh, look like this. Right, so there's the labor line, goes all the way up there. There's the tubing. And then non-negativities actually are, are the axis lines. So x1 greater than or equal to 0 is this line. This is where x1 is equal to 0. And the right of it, it's greater. And the same thing, x2 greater than or equal to 0 is the x1 axis. Right? This is where x2 is equal to 0. And above the line, x2 is greater than 0. So now the question is, which points satisfy all those constraints? And I hope you can see the region here inside will be the feasible region. So it is going to look like this. And, um, and then uh, we have already considered now all the constraints and we know what solutions are feasible for this problem. Feasible means uh, they actually can be uh, implemented in reality, right? We can produce any number of x1, x2, right? Any point here in this region represents a solution for this problem. But uh, now we would like to maximize profit. So the question still remains um, which solution will maximize profit. Now, because this profit function is a linear function, um, meaning that right linear function takes a, some parameter times variable plus parameter times variable, um, we know that, uh, for example, here increasing x1, as we increase x1, we will always be adding $350 for every unit of increase of x1. So there is a here clear um, benefit of increasing x1 and the same thing increasing x2, right? Now the problem becomes when and you increase x1, you're going to let's say hit this point and then you can no longer increase x2. But maybe it would be better to uh, decrease x1 and maybe increase x2 somewhat, right? So go a little bit up. So the question is maybe, you know, good solutions that would look like good candidates would be somewhere on this boundary here. Let me actually clean this up a little bit, right? 
somewhere on this boundary, there must be good solutions because these are the solutions that are giving us high values of x1 and x2, and they kind of they give us the different trade of between x1. Right here, we just focus on the first product. We only produce aqueous pus, and then this extreme, we only produce x2. We only produce hydroluxes, right? And somewhere here, we're choosing a balance. So now the question remains: which solution is the optimal solution? I'm not going to go into details. But um, in linear programming, you always have optimal solutions on the boundary, right? And I hope it is clear now that somewhere on this boundary, there will be op op the optimal solution. And, uh, and also, uh, at least one of them will always be in a corner point, like in this point, or in this point, or in this point, or in this point. And if we evaluate those points, we are going to get the following values. So here are all points. I actually put coordinates here. So for example, this point, x1 is 0 and x2 is 180. This is the exact coordinate of this point. Um, you can verify like, if you plug in in the tubing constraint 0 and 180, you should get exactly the used feet of tubing equal 2880 and so on, right? So this is a point. And if you plug this 0, 180 into the objective, it's 0 for x1 and 180 for x2, you will get 54,000 of profit. If you consider this corner point, 80, 120, again, it is calculated accurately. It's not just reading from the chart. It has to be exactly on the lines. Um, you will find that the profit for this point is 64,000. So actually, it's better, right? 54, 64, it's better to choose this than this. And then if you continue, you'll see it's even better to choose this corner point it's 66,100, and this is actually the maximum. If you continue following this, this uh, edge, this, this, uh, this boundary, you'll see that here it's 174, 0, right? X1 is 174 and X2 is 0. And then the value of this is the profit is 60,900. So the best solution is at this point, right? And so the interpretation of this is, right, that... 122 is value of x1, 78 is value of x2, and uh, the, the, the profit achieved by this solution is 66,100. So we can say the optimal solution is to produce 122 aqua spa hot tubs and 78 hydrolux hot tubs, right? This is what the definition of the variables is, uh, of course, per week. And this, should, this will give us a profit of 66,100 dollars, right? So this is what we see in the graphical method. And the important thing to realize here is that we see in this example um, that there are many solutions that are feasible and each of them gives different profit or, or, or not, not each of them. They, they give different profits, sometimes the same, right? I'm sure there are some solutions that will give exactly the same profit, right? But we're interested in the one that gives the highest profit and we uh, determine that the best profit will be achieved at this solution, 122.78. The graphical method, as I said earlier, is of course not a practical method because it can only solve problems with two decision variables, x1, x2, right? Uh, if I had uh, uh, five products that I could produce potentially and I had a similar model with five different variables, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, I wouldn't be able to plot it like this because it would require a five-dimensional plot right, with x3 variables somewhere here, x4, x5. Uh, and uh, I wouldn't be able to just see what the feasible points are. right? So in, in, in practice, this method cannot be used. Therefore, we used some computerized methods. We used the simplex method, uh, which is a method, a special algorithm uh, that can solve these problems for any number of variables and any number of constraints, as long as they are all linear. And uh, this is uh, what we're going to do in another uh, video.